Now, section 14 specifically is on word problems. Now, we've already done some word problems. So, five less than a number. I'm not sure if I have the answers here. Yeah. Remember, that's one where you have to switch the equation round. So, I got 2x minus 5. Um, less than twice the number, 2 times x is, which is equals 17. And now we're just going to go ahead and solve this. So, instead of subtracting 5, add 5, work out what that gives you. And then instead of times it by 2, just go ahead and divide by 2, and it can give you 11. So once you're used to the method for these, you can actually do these questions fairly quickly. Uh, let me get out a full screen here. There we go, and I can scroll back up. So for our second question, 5 times the sum of a number. Now I've got two properties here together. I've got times and sum. So I know I've got five, at 5 times something at the start. But then where it says sum, I know that I'm going to have a plus in the middle here. Oops. But what am I going to do in the sum of a number doubled, which is 2x, and 3? So when you've got those two operations together like this, know that it's going to be a grouping question. Um, and it says it equals is 8, so that means equals 8. And now we can go ahead and distribute this. We can subtract 15 from both sides. And if I scroll down a little bit more so you can see. Uh, I can divide both sides by 10, and we can just leave that like that. That's a fraction that doesn't simplify. And we're quite happy with fractions as answers. Now, importantly for our last one, we're going to look at consecutive numbers. Now, consecutive numbers are things like 7, 8, 9. So, in other words, each number is one more than the previous number. Now, we're going to use that to help us with the fact we're going to do sum of three consecutive numbers. So, now I'm going to be adding them together. Now, I don't know my first number, so I'm just going to call it x. But one more than that would be my next number, and one more than that would be my next number. And I'm going to add all of them together. If it said the sum of four consecutive numbers, then the next number would just be x plus 3. It says equals 63. And then now we've got to try and solve this. Now to do that, we've got to collect terms together. So x plus x plus x is 3x, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And now I should be able to solve this fairly easy. Instead of adding 3, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, and instead of times it by 3, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3. Now when you finish, make sure you answer the question though. So what are the three numbers? Well, one of them is 20. And now remember this says consecutive numbers, so the next one will be 21, and the next one should be 22. And then go ahead and check, if you add those numbers together, do you get 63? And indeed you do. Now the next one says even numbers. So even numbers like 2, 4, 6, 8... Notice this time each number goes up by 2. So if I'm trying to find three consecutive even numbers, I'm going to start with x, but then I'm going to have x plus 2, because 2 more, and then 2 more than that would be x plus 4. Now I'm not sure if I actually used x. Yes, I did. Equals 228. If I was to have four consecutive even numbers, then the next one would be x plus 6. Then we can group terms. So I've got 3x, 2 plus 4 is 6, and I should be able to solve this one equally easily as well. Take away 6 from both sides, and then divide by 3. Now, you've got to be careful on this one. Once you know the first number 74, a lot of people think, oh, 75, 76. Remember, we're doing even numbers this time, so they go up by 2. So if 74 works, then it's going to be 76 and 78. Now, actually, this same method would also work if it was odd numbers as well. Because if I was to have 1, 3, 5, 7, notice these also go up by 2 each time as well. So two very specific methods that you need to learn.